Hello everyone, welcome back to Rulebook Rundown. My name's Alan Paquette, and today will be kind of a special video, predominantly for the Dice Throne community, uh, but other people may find it interesting as well. Uh, I'm going to go through and give a brief tutorial on how to play Dice Throne in Tabletop Simulator. So it's going to be more about Tabletop Simulator and less about the rules of Dice Throne, uh, but more of how to get Dice Throne on Tabletop Simulator on Steam and uh, how to go about using the program because it's it isn't very kind to newcomers so having having something there a resource to look back on of here are a bunch of shortcuts you can do was something that really helped me uh, get into tabletop simulator for a lot of other games so uh, starting off we'll open steam and uh, you, I'm assuming that you will have downloaded Tabletop Simulator already. You do have to purchase it. Uh, it's not a free program, but it does go on sale pretty regularly. So once you have Tabletop Simulator and it's installed, you can go to the workshop here uh, once you get to this page. So this is the, the, the workshop is where people will uh, generate their own content for, the, for Tabletop Simulator. So if we look up uh, Dice Throne here. There is an official Dice Throne official scripted um, thing here. This is this is what we want. Um, so this one is is produced by Roxley, uh, and they they fully endorse this on here. So it's not not anything bad. We're we're basically using it for demoing the game essentially. Uh, so when you go into here, you will have uh, this subscribe button that you will want to click, and that will subscribe to the Dice Throne mod for Tabletop Simulator. This is something that will automatically kind of download and install. They're really small things. They happen very quickly. So once you have subscribed, you can go back and start your Tabletop Simulator. Here we are. And if it is your first time, one of the things you can do, uh, if you would like this um, light bulb icon here, is the tutorial that you can go through. Uh, I didn't want to actually go into it though. Whoops. All right. So you can do the tutorial. That'll give you kind of basics. Otherwise, I will go through a lot of the basics right here. So if you are going to be hosting the game, you will go to create here, and then you will select a multiplayer game. When you do that, you will have your server name. You can name whatever you want. You can put it, whether it's to public or friends, uh, and the friends is based on your Steam list, or you can do an invite thing where you can invite people to join. I usually do friends because I don't have very many friends on Steam. You can set a server password if you do public. Um, so if, you're, if you don't want to be friends with the people on Steam, you can do that, and here's a password. They'll find you via the server name. You can set max players. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so we'll create the server, and then in our workshop here, uh, this is where you will find your Dice Throne official scripted app here, or mod here. So we'll click on that, load it up, and then boom, here we are. <clears throat> so we are in this. You can play up to six players with the current configuration. General rules and controls of Tabletop Simulator. The easiest thing that I have found is uh, the WASD keys on your keyboard will move the camera around. Um, the scroll wheel will zoom in and out. There are other key commands you can do for uh, zooming and scrolling or er, uh, moving around and such. This just seems to be kind of the general what you know computer gamer people are kind of used to. So. Uh, that is moving around. If you hold the right mouse click and drag, then you will rotate the camera. So that's going to be useful because in this particular game, people are going to be set up at odd angles. So you will probably want to kind of move over to somebody else's spot, rotate the camera so you can actually see their board, that sort of thing. Uh, so that's part of the basics. So the first thing that you will want to do is in the upper right hand corner you have your name and if other people have joined here's where you can invite invite friends as well. Uh, if other people have joined you their names will be here. The first thing you need to do is choose a seat at the table. So if you click on your name 
you can do change color and then this will pop up and these in this mod they have set that these are basically the seats at the table so you can choose one of them you will have to have one uh, before you start the game because you normally will join into a game as a spectator where you don't have a seat so you won't get cards to your hand um, and it just isn't gonna work out too well excuse me so uh, the first thing we would do is change our color to a given seat so uh, so I would maybe do this blue one here it automatically rotates the camera to put you there but again the right key or the right click will rotate your camera also the arrow keys will pan and rotate so this is up and down on the arrow keys and then left and right if you would rather do that other than the mouse so for this game uh, they have a scripted setup which means that they have programmed it to have a button where you will click the button uh, of like choosing a character like if we choose shadow thief here we'll click it it automatically sets it up so that is all kind of background stuff you don't need to worry about it's mainly just you click it it sets it up huzzah so this is where we have our board and deck discard CP health our um, status effects and dice so when we start the game uh, we will start off with four cards right for the starting hand um, the deck is probably pre-shuffled but I usually like to shuffle this deck when the cards are all stacked up like this you can either right click and shuffle is the top option or you'll notice in the brackets there it says R so if you just hover your mouse over this deck you can press R you'll see the card flip and hear the sound effect that is shuffling and randomizing the entire deck uh, in order to draw cards you can either right click and draw on this list that takes too long so if you instead hover over the deck and press the four key on the top of the keyboard so not on the number pad those do different things in this but the keys on the one through nine at the top of the keyboard will draw from a deck uh, if you are hovering over it so we drew four cards these go to our hand uh, this is a hidden zone right here where these cards are so if for instance we were sitting here when the person has their hand of four this is what we see welcome to the shadows so they have cleverly added instead of the backs of cards they have added funny things on them when other people are trying to view your hidden area so you don't need to worry even though you can see the cards they cannot be seen by other people that are sitting down so that's good this also defaults to have your hand at the bottom of the screen uh, sometimes this is good because if you're looking at somebody else you can still see what's in your hand other times it maybe gets in the way of your cursor you can hide or show that with the H key uh, that's for hand and it is just showing or hiding your hand uh, so we'll have it up for now these cards are pretty small to see so normally in tabletop simulator you will hold the alt key over something and it will uh, show that thing larger so if we have the alt key over the CP dial it's larger if we're over the dice it shows it a little bit larger in this particular mod uh, I'm not really sure this seems to be the only one that this happens in that I've found is that it's still pretty small when you're holding that but if you're holding alt and you do the scroll wheel up you will magnify or increase the size of your viewing thing for the alt so now our CP dials a lot larger dice appear a lot larger it's a lot easier to see so that is going to be the first key thing that I have learned is while holding alt when you do the scroll wheel you will enlarge the viewing bit of the card other people also cannot see this this is only for you uh, so that is seeing the cards quite largely uh, you can also an alt will magnify anything um, any object that your cursor is over so if you are over your player board it will show your player board quite large so you can see that 
while being having the camera further away. Similarly, leaflet, uh, cards, that whole, whole shebang. Um, if you don't want this huge thing, but you want to see just this little bit, the M key uh, will magnify wherever your cursor is. So some people like to use this instead of the large uh, show everything. So if you're like just wanting to read shadows, you can just magnify where your cursor is uh, and see that. So that's that's another tool to help with your visualization stuff. Next up, we will go for uh, using the cards. So we have the CP cost, of course. We have the CP dial. On these dials, both the CP and the health, we have a plus one, minus one buttons on here that they've programmed in specifically in this game. So if you click on the plus one, you're increasing this value by one, minus one, uh, likewise. Same thing for health. There's also a plus five and a minus five button that they have there. So when you take damage, you can just reduce it or increase it um, accordingly. That's pretty, pretty simple, self-explanatory. So when you are going to play a card like this Shifty Strike 2, cost 2 CP, you'll just reduce the 2 with the button, and then you can play the card. Um, this mod, they have uh, made, they're called snap points for all of the spots where cards can go. So you will click and drag from your hand or from this hand, if your hand isn't there, you'll left click and drag to bring the card out of your hand. Then if it's an upgrade, you'll just have it over whichever upgrade it goes to. And even if you're not quite close, as long as this shadow underneath it shows up, that will snap onto that spot, putting it right where you need it to go. Um, if you are playing a card like this card trick, um, and it's something that goes to the discard, you will just drag it to the discard area section, and then boom, it snaps in there also as your discard. Uh, when it's the start of your turn, they have programmed in a start turn button, and so you can see when you hover over it that this will deal one card to your hand and add one to your CP. So it basically does your income phase by clicking this button. So it increased the CP and it drew a card. Again, if you ever need to draw a card from something else, like the cornucopia effects or cardocopia effect, um, if you like need to draw two cards, hover over, press the two key. At the top of the keyboard, you'll draw two cards. Uh, all right. Some of the people I noticed when I was playing around with this a little bit ago, sorry to jump around just a bit, um, how the table is aligned for this particular mod is right here is the front of the table. So some of these places, these four spots here, um, are all angled a little bit. So if you have your cards here, when you pull them out, you can see how it's angled some. That is because it is orienting based on the front of the table. So in the top right of Tabletop Simulator, it has a rotation degrees button. You can, I, I think the default might be at 90. So whenever you try to rotate this item, um, with rotate here, the shortcut keys are Q and E. So if you hover over or if you're holding on to it, you can press Q or E. And for each press, it'll rotate this degrees. So that's kind of a pain on this corner thing because your card just can't line up. If you were to place it in a spot, it will snap and line up. So that will be good. But otherwise, this might be a little annoying. So you can click on the rotation degrees to change them to whatever you want. And then, uh, then when you rotate, it'll rotate that amount. Probably not a necessary thing, but that is why um, when you pull cards out, they're going to be sideways if you're not in one of the edge seats. So, back to where we were at. Uh, let's see what's next. Rolling dice. That's going to be pretty important for a game like this. So... 
In order to roll the dice, the easiest way is you can click and left click and drag to highlight an area, and you can use that to highlight all the dice at the start. Then as long as you're clicking on one of them, you can hold the click and you will have all of the dice together. Um, the way that I like to do it is same way that we had pressed R to randomize the deck, we can press R to randomize the dice. So each time you press it, it'll kind of toss the dice up and roll them. Uh, I kind of like to press R a few times to give it a few extra hits, um, just to get that extra spin, because occasionally when they jump like this four there, uh, they, they pop up and they don't really spin. So hitting it a few times really gets all the dice to spend to help with the randomization. When you have the dice like such, uh, you can select individual dice by left clicking and holding and you can drag them around. Um, if you, uh, so you can do that to like save dice and then have the other ones to highlight and roll individually. Oh, look at that turn. That'd be good. Uh, if you need to set a die value, like you're using um, a six it or something, you can either right click and then the rotation value is going to be the side of the die that you want it to set to. So you can set to six. Alternatively, when you're on a die, um, depending on the side of the die, you can press the one, two, three, four, five, or six. Um, number keys at the top of the keyboard to swap or set the die to that value. So if we need a two, we do a two. We need a six, we do a six. That's the easiest way to do that. Otherwise, if you rotate these dice by having the cursor over them and doing Q or E, you will rotate to the next value higher. So when you do tip it and you're tipping a four down to a three, you can rotate left with Q and it'll bring it down to a three. That's just a thing you can do. Um, let's see, if you are wanting to just select particular dice and you don't feel like dragging, clicking and dragging all of the things around, if you hold control and then click on an individual die, you'll select it. And then when you click on another die, you'll select it. Much like other programs where holding control, you can select additional objects. So now these two dice are, are selected and you can move them out from there or you can roll just those two dice by themselves. Uh, that's probably mainly it for the dice. Status effects. They start off with, you can see the infinity symbol over the shadows word. That means that this stack has an infinite number of these shadows. Uh, they, they do this so you don't have to worry about it. If you had just like however many, you know, it comes with four or something, then, you know, one might get tossed off the table or you lose it and can't find it somewhere. It maybe falls through something. So these are going to be like infinitely spawning things here. Uh, so that's what that uh, infinity symbol means. To spawn one of them, you just left click and drag, and you kind of want to do it quickly, and you'll drag a thing off of there. The reason you want to do it quickly is if you have things stacked up, it probably doesn't work for this because this is locked down, uh, probably don't need to know about that right away, but if there's a stack of something, if you hold like do a long click with the left click, you will lift up the entire stack. If you do a quick click and drag, you will take off one from the stack. So if you, uh, if you didn't want to have so many tokens set around, you can stack them up if they are like things. I'm pretty sure you can't stack. Yeah, so the poison won't be actually stacked with the shadows. And it shows three shadows in this stack, so you can still pretty quickly see how many you have there. Um, when getting rid of them, you can either drag them back to their their original pile, and it will just basically delete the item, or you can uh, highlight it and press the delete key, and it will erase that item from existence. 
the reason that you maybe don't want to do that till you're more used to the to the program is if you accidentally highlight too many things or something else is selected like this die then when you hit the delete key those will be gone also that's usually pretty bad some of the things uh oops some of the things you can undo um it's really going to be the I th i'm pretty sure only the host can do it you can rewind time and it's set at like a five or ten second interval uh it's not something that you want to mess with often if you can help it because some of the scripting like the button presses and stuff can get messed up if you rewind time and undo things so you kind of want to try to avoid that if you can um so putting the things back or being very careful when you delete them, you can also uh, right click on it and then there's delete at the bottom to delete that item. Uh, let's see, what else do we need? Um, I think that's probably mainly it. Uh, we have the reset hero at the bottom. So if you have played and you um, you know want to do another game you can do the reset reset hero it'll bring you back to this choose your hero bit um the random button if you don't want to pick one randomly gives you a person and i think that's probably everything for now to have you started if you are talking over with somebody else uh, a thing that i found really helpful especially when teaching if you're teaching somebody if you tap the tab key it will create this arrow where your cursor is. So that's going to be very helpful for especially teaching or saying, hey, I'm activating Burning Soul right here. And other people will be able to see that arrow. It has that sound. Um, if the arrow is off the screen, it has the little arrow symbol of, hey, somebody is trying to alert you to something. Um, so that is tab for that. I just thought of something else. Camera stuff. So say you're playing with somebody else and you don't want to keep having to scroll back over. Uh, how dare you look? A, another nice feature is saving camera states. So if you line up like just how you want your player board or something, if you hold control and press one of the number keys, like control one, it will save camera number one slot. So now... Uh, if we were to go to our friend, let's, let's change their, change their person here. If we want to do the same thing and kind of see our friends board and where they're at, we can save that to like control two, we'll save the camera in two in order to jump to those cameras, you would hold shift and press the corresponding number. So shift one will load the camera one shift two will move us back to camera two. Uh, and you can obviously do that um, at least 10 times. I'm pretty sure, yeah, camera zero is a thing. So you can do 10 of those saves. Um, so if you're, if you're playing with everybody, you can still get around a lot easier than um, manipulating the camera all around. And I think that's probably it. Uh, if you want to save the game, whoever is the host will go up to games here and then they will choose the save load large option in the bottom left. Clicking this green save will create a new save. Uh, the root folder is default and probably the only thing you have. You will be able to name it uh, whatever you would like and save and it will make a save right there. If you're wanting to override the save, you can click these options and there's the overwrite. Um, and then in the future, you could load up, even if you are in um, just a basic table or something. Well, that is not how that's going to work. Um, here, our game of... Uh, Castles of Burgundy that has an amazing table flip. Um, so good. Uh, anyway, if you go to games and you do this save load and you click on uh, the thing, clicking on it is loading. 
If you want to override it, you have to go to the options. So you want to load Dice Throne. Boom. We are back exactly where we were. And I, that that is it. That's going to be most of the basics to get you started on Tabletop Simulator doing Dice Throne. There's obviously a lot more that you can do with Tabletop Simulator. Um, but this is probably going to be enough for right now. So then you can menu, main menu uh, to quit out. And then you can quit there. Boom. So hopefully that helped. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below or uh, send me, put a message in the Discord. Uh, I am CloudArt in the Discord and uh, I'll answer any questions you have. Like I said, I put hundreds of hours into Tabletop Simulator. So if you have, a, have an issue with something, I probably have an answer. Uh, so thanks everyone for scoping this out and stay tuned for more videos, I guess. <laughs> Until then, keep on gaming.